anybody with the old set packs have to get the current set pack? And the answer is no. You're just going to have to be patient because we have to take care of the new guys now. We told you we were going to continue to add things to your set pack, even though you hadn't paid for those added features. So we will be adding some of the features that are on this set pack with your current set packs, but you're going to have to wait. So please do not email asking. We will inform you. Okay. Sorry. We have to say that because a lot of people will inquire now when we told them they're going to have to wait. When they watch this video a week from now, three weeks from now, four weeks from now, even tomorrow, they're going to want to know answers to questions that we said. They're going to have to wait until we get that to them because, again, these are not promised features. These are, we said, that we will be adding features to their sat packs periodically that they have not paid for. We made that a guarantee to them didn't suggest exactly which features those would be. We just suggested that that's what we would be doing. So since that is the case, there is no obligation other than the one we have placed upon ourselves. So please do not misunderstand what we are stating to you. We will take care of it in due time. But for right now, our main priority is to let the people know about the Omega SAP pack. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you this update on the Omega Sat Pack. The Omega Sat Pack, even though most people have been ordering the Omega Sat Pack, they not a single purchase of the Prime or the Plus Sat Pack. Now, pretty much they're the same thing. The only thing the Omega comes with is the larger grant of credits for tax transference. Now, see, I even had the tax preparer yesterday because she is a tax agent, she suggested she didn't know if we could transfer a tax credit. Excuse me? She didn't know if we could transfer. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, yes, you can transfer tax credits. We've already shown people proof that that can happen. Technically, what you don't understand, your tax credits equate to state level if you want them to. You don't have to apply all of your tax credits to the federal level. And just so that those of you who don't understand the issue of tax credits, Let's go back here for just a second. We're going to open up a new window, and we're going to put in T-R-A-N-S-R. No, we're going to put in E-R. Uh, and we put in transfer of tax credits. And let's see what we get with our transfer of tax credits. This is just for those people who are not sure, who don't know, who have not done the research. This is to let you know that we have done the research. Transferable tax credit. So now there is something, reduced state income tax liability. So on a state level, you most definitely can transfer tax credits, transferable state tax credits and incentives. Okay. So, but they say that they limit you. Now, look, this is Moss Adams. These individuals credit purchase opportunities you can purchase tax credits imagine that imagine that so tax credits have value ladies and gentlemen because they can be purchased and sold those of you who are interested in finding out more about this especially what regards to the omega the plus and the prime sap packs this is what i'm suggesting you start your research on this is us letting you know credits tax credits this is on a state level again Okay, on the state level, individuals transfer credits all the time. On the federal level, do you know that you can transfer your tax credits to your child's institution to help pay for his tuition? Exactly. There is a lot of information on tax credits. Now, the idea is, are these refundable tax credits? Well, look, ladies and gentlemen, when you do a write-off, Uh-oh. See, now this thing said, I got my R. This thing said write off and charge off tax credits. I didn't put that in there. Okay, but it did. Watch this. There we go. There's the tax credits again. Write off and charge off tax credits. So because you can take a write-off and a charge-off, 
and receive tax credits, then we're talking about transferable tax credits because that's what this was under. Okay? In addition, income from your canceled debt can increase your tax liability result in, ladies and gentlemen, let's show you how it doesn't increase your tax liability. So since it's income, you haven't earned any income. Well, you've earned income because it's showing that you got credit for the loan. And the reason why you owe taxes on it because it now has value because the IRS has extended credit to the creditor. So if the IRS has extended that credit and it's automatic credit, if they choose to write it off or charge it off, it's automatic credit. If they've done that, then that means the bank or the creditor has received a benefit. If they have not offset that with your account by balancing out your account with the credit agencies and are still reporting it as a debt, that is illegal. They must show that amount as having been paid. Even if it says charge off, it is a payment. It is not a negative. So please do not think of it as a negative and don't let anybody tell you it's a negative. These are their policies. So you can have the record documented properly. Now look, if they receive the credit and it is counted as income to you and the bank received the benefit and now you have to pay the taxes on it, then they didn't have the right to take your home. They didn't have the right to take your car. See, they cannot receive the benefits of the tax credits and then still take your property. That's why it's called loan forgiveness. You cannot forgive something and go back and penalize the person. That's illegal. It's called loan forgiveness or it's called debt forgiveness for a reason. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the new SAP packs, the Omega SAP pack, that particular SAP pack is designed for one reason, one special reason only. It is designed as a trust agreement. Now, we showed you the trust documents in a previous, couple of previous videos where you got to see for yourself that the Treasury Department has a different definition for a trust agreement than you do. See, their trust agreements, they say they create. And in their trust agreements, they are the beneficiary and the grantor. Go back and take a look. They say that they are the beneficiary and the grantor. Now, if they are the beneficiary and the grantor, then that must tell you something. That must tell you that you get to be the beneficiary and the grantor. Isn't that interesting, ain't it? Well, guess what? It's the beneficiary and the grantor. What you're doing is you're making the public servants, pay attention to the word servant. You're making the public servant what they already are, servants. You're making the public servants what the public servants already are, servants. Because they are servants, they don't have any rights, ladies and gentlemen. They are public servants. They don't have any rights, but you can't treat them as slaves. Okay, you can treat them as indentured servants, but not as slaves. So you don't get to boss them around. No, 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 no. You can only treat them as a servant when it comes to your personal property. You don't have the right outside of that because we're dealing with this on a personal level. So with your personal property, your personal rights, you can treat them as servants. Whenever they're dealing with your personal property and your personal rights, then they're dealing under constitution and inalienable common law rights. When they're doing that, then they're bound by their oath of office. Any judge who has taken a secondary oath of office, there is this thing called first in line, first in time. That secondary oath of office is invalid. Why? Because the first oath of office was for the office. There was no other oath of office for the office. They cannot maintain two offices at the same time. The Constitution doesn't allow that. You cannot be president and be a congressional member at the same time. Constitution doesn't allow that. You cannot maintain two different offices at the same time. So even though they are attempting to maintain two different offices and take several different oaths, they can't do that. They're operating on a presumption. How do you get them on the stupidity of their presumption? Because they took the first oath. It's for the office that they are holding. They cannot take another oath for the same office. That's illegal. It's a violation of the first oath, so it automatically cancels the second. And if they extinguish the first oath, that means they're operating out of office. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that you have judicial officers, peace officers, and you have these other wonderful officers of the court. So let's do the, let's do the English so that many of you can understand what's going on. 
in court, you have a judicial officer. The bailiff, sheriff, and or police officers are deputies of the court. Officers of the court. They are called officers of the court. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead and look it up. Now you have the attorneys, prosecution and defense, and the attorneys who are working on behalf of private individuals. Each one of these attorneys are officers of the court. Now, mind you, officers of the court and the clerk of the court is officers of the court. So you have all of these officers of the court. Well, first of all, I need you all to understand the term. The term officer is a military term. It is not a legislative term. It is not a judicial term. It is an administrative term. That's why the president sits in the office of the president. Because he's the military commander. He operates as the uh, executive branch officer and as the military commander of the United States Armed Forces and Services. Just like general, attorney general, he is an administrative officer. He's under the executive branch. The attorneys for the state operate under the executive branch. Now, this is going to throw you guys for a loop. Some of you have heard it before, but you're going to hear it again from me. Because that's the only person you've been hearing it from. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have these officers of the court being attorneys, being police officers, both the police department and the attorneys are under the executive branch or the administrative branch of government. They cannot be officers of the court. Well, why is that? Well, because there is this provision in law that's absolute. You can't get around it. And it's called... Uh -uh. There it is right there. That's our friend right there. Separation of powers. See, it's called the separation of powers clause. See, what happens, they didn't want government usurping the will of the people. So they didn't want the executive branch and the legislative branch coming together and overruling two-thirds majority. They didn't want that. So what did they do? They said, we're going to make it so that no branches of the government can come together and do a coup. That's what happened. Okay. The act of vesting the legislative, executive, and judicial powers of government in separate bodies Constitutional arrangements based on separation of powers. Okay, this explains it a little bit on Wikipedia. Separation refers to the division of a statute or a state's government into branches, each with separate and independent powers and responsibilities, so that the powers of one branch are not in conflict with those of another branch, i.e., you cannot have administrative officers be officers of the court and judicial officers be officers of the court, of the very same court, and one be judicial branch and one be executive branch. We've been telling you for years, the courts are operating administratively under the Presidential Proclamation 2039. So Presidential Proclamation 2039 is what's causing that. But then that's where you get your footing and standing when bringing forth your complaints, when bringing forth your complaints, when bringing forth your complaints. You don't bring them to the courts. You bring them administratively for now. And then you apply to the court to have the court assign the judicial power to the judge. Now, who do you apply to? Well, I'm suggesting, I am suggesting the presiding judge of the court. More than likely, that individual has been vested with judicial power. Now, remember, these are administrative officers they don't do their job, then it's your job to go ahead and bring it to their attention by following your complaint. And that's what we talked about earlier. All right, I just wanted to bring this to your attention when all of you are dealing with uh, these courts and these different officers and understanding who's who. And then when you look at the SAP packs, the Omega pack, the new Omega pack, and what it does and the power that it has. See, it's not just a trust agreement. It is the trust agreement. It is an exempt trust agreement but you're gonna to have to read it because it's in the document itself. The whole understanding of the document is in the document itself. The very first 20 pages of that 57 page document. So I would say really go over it because again, it includes its own 
promissory note with the government. That's right. You are lending the government. I believe it is, in some cases, as little as $10 million of your full faith and credit. Okay, watch this. I don't want full faith and credit clause. We'll do full faith and credit. We'll do full faith and credit. We'll do the definition first, and then I'll show you what I'm meaning. Legal definition of full faith and credit clause four of the Constitution that requires states to give full faith and credit. See, we don't want that. Uh uh. We don't want that full faith and credit. We don't want that clause. See, it didn't come from Congress. Congress didn't invent the full faith and credit. Now, see, you notice how this wants to keep bringing us back. I'm going to do the people because I want to highlight the people in this search. And I want to see if you all understand that it's the government by the people, other people, and for the people. It is the people that the power of government comes from. The government is created by the people. Okay? It, the government doesn't create its own credit. The credit comes from the people. Okay? Pay attention. Secure and perpetuate mutual friendship and intercourse among the people of the United States. Full faith and credit is from the people. Uh, rights of state citizens, rights of extradition, blah, blah, blah. Don't care about that part. Madison's full faith and credit clause derived from the people. Government should be derived from the people through its electoral. Okay, and this is UK. This is in the UK that this document is up here. But the full faith and credit clause comes from the people. Doesn't come from anything else, any place else. The government is borrowing from the full faith and credit of the people in order to lend monies, in order to finance wars, and so forth. Well, if you have full faith and credit, and let's go to that UK article. Even though it's UK, let's go to the UK article. I'm, I'm interested. And if you guys can hold on a second, I got to answer this one second. Okay, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. Sorry that that. Uh, well, you guys didn't experience the amount of time, uh, but I had to answer a call, and this is one of my busiest days, and that's why we're speaking so quickly, because I have less than 30 minutes before we have a corporate meeting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a British paper from, and we're going to go to the particular university, Yeshiva University. Cardozo School of Law, don't know, but I know that it must be known over in Europe, okay? But wherever it's located, don't even know if it's not here in the United States, but because it is a UK address where I found it, then I'm suspecting it's the UK. Don't know, like I said, it's not really that big of a concern. Because this is an academic article, Okay, because it is an academic article, it is speaking about full faith and credit. I believe I've downloaded it before, never looked at it in depth in any way, sense, or form. But what I can tell you is I do know, let's see if we can do it real quick, in the people. I put in in the people, and that didn't show up. Oh, it does show up at least once. So lies in the people themselves. The most fatal, if not most frequent cause of these vices lies in the people themselves. This in turn points to Madison's proposed solution to the vices of the current system, which is, in short, no more powerful and effective, excuse me, a more powerful and effective national government. Madison stated plainly, okay, 
And then we have another time when they say is in the people. Now that one doesn't deal with what we're talking about. So we're looking to go to the second one so it can deal with what we're talking about. And the people themselves, Larry Kramer has argued that the modern understanding, let's go to the next page, of the Constitution as a species of law, see a species of law, not the law, the common law is the law, is of surprisingly recent vintage. Kramer states that both in its origins and for most of its history, the final interpretive authority rested in the people themselves and the courts no less than elected representatives were subordinate to their judgment, the judgment of the people. Exactly what I'm saying in that other document that I'm creating for the complaint against judges. They have created this, this, this so-called narrative, this so-called history, and this is what they say, the origins for the most of our history. They've created this recent vintage of history where they have reshaped things and they've created television shows that made people think that the reality was different. And it is not. It has not changed. They have not suspended the common law. They have attempted to suspend the common law, but they have not. I would definitely suggest y'all read this because academic reviews like this one will give you the case law and the history. That's why you'll see I'll go to them often. Oh, can I get a copy of that? It's called Madison's Full Faith and Credit Clause. That's all you got to do. Madison's Full Faith and Credit Clause. You can get a copy and it'll pull out the PDF. Just that simple. I'm downloading it for me, not for you. No, just kidding. We'll put this up online when we get an opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one last thing and I'm going to see if I can find it. Maybe I will be, maybe I won't be. What I've done is I pulled up the clerk style manual. Let's do that right quick. C L E R K S T Y L E. And let's see, M A N. Oh, didn't even pull it up. I thought it would pull it up that way, but. Now, I'm putting in the clerk style manual. Ladies and gentlemen, in that clerk style manual, I want to find things that most people would not be looking for. Okay, but they're all over the internet. I made it, maybe I pulled up 10 different copies. Each state has its own clerk style manual. In the clerk style manual, you want to look up name or you want to look up block capitals for names. Now, I put in clerk style manual, put dot PDF. And I'm going to suggest you look up the PDF version. Okay, now you're going to see there's going to be a whole page of style manuals for all of the courts, including the federal courts. You want to get a handle on how the courts are operating and what their procedures are? Start here. Okay, there you go, everyone. I hope this information proves to be beneficial to all of you. Again, we are providing information from you and giving you the sources of where you can find the information so that you'll see that we're not basing this information on our opinion. We're not basing this information on what we think. We're not basing this information on, well, basically subjection to our, um, what do you call that? When somebody has an opinion and they don't want nobody else to see anything else but their opinion. Exactly our opinion. You can make the determination for yourself based upon your research and your going over information. I will be very grateful to speak with all of you the next time we have an opportunity. Please, everyone, take care. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good day. Goodbye.